Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. This is an update of my original AMD thesis. I believe the company is going to become an end-to-end -end AI giant and today we're going to be getting deep into the key 3 2024 earnings report which the market found fairly upsetting with the stock down over 9% today uh, but I was actually fairly impressed so let's get started. AMD essentially dethroned Intel on the CPU side by investing in its chiplet platform and then leveraging it to collaborate with customers more closely and iterate on its products faster. More importantly, AMD had highly competitive CPU engines early on in the process, but it still took years for the products to gain traction in the marketplace. Today, AMD is pursuing the exact same strategy to gain market share on the AI GPU side, while the market is getting a bit impatient with a stock down 9% the day after the earnings report. Meanwhile, in Q3 2024, AMD revised AI GPU sales guidance for fiscal year 2024 to 5 billion, having recently increased the guidance from $2 billion to $4.5 billion. Simultaneously, the actual reported growth of the data center segment begins to exhibit exponential progress, as you can see in the graph below. Data center revenue in turn accounted for 52% of total revenue this quarter, with the segment thus becoming a predominant source of revenue for AMD. With the stock down 27% from all-time highs, the market market is barely rewarding AMD for the above achievement. The prevailing view right now seems to be that AMD will not succeed simply because it hasn't obliterated Nvidia by now. But this fundamentally ignores the main driver of AMD's business, which is not technology actually, which is a very important component of the operation of course, it's trust. No matter how good the technology they make is, customers will still need time to get comfortable making investments in it. This was true for CPUs back in the day and will be true for any compute engine they bring to the market over time. Towards the end of the Q&A section of the Q3 earnings call, an analyst asked Lisa why AMD is expected to bring in under $10 billion in revenue from AI GPUs, while Nvidia is expected to bring in from $50 to $60 billion. In my view, understanding Lisa's answer requires a certain degree of wisdom and necessarily an intricate understanding of long-term value creation processes. But the main takeaway is that no matter how good your tech, you're not going to take the whole market in a bunch of quarters. It's going to take a few years. If you remember, Harsh, and I, I think you do, our epic ramp, you know, from Zen 1, Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4, we had an extremely good product even back in the Rome days, but uh, it does take time to ensure that there is trust built, there is familiarity with the product set, um, there are some differences. Although you know, there you know, we're we're both GPUs, there are some differences, obviously, in the software environment, and people want to get comfortable with the uh, the workload ramp. So, from a ramp standpoint, um, I'm actually very positive on the ramp rate. It's the fastest product ramp that I've seen, um, you know, overall. And um, you know, my view is, you know, this is a multi generational journey. We've always said that. Um, we feel uh, very good about the progress. Um, I think, you know, next year is going to be um, about, you know, expanding both customer set as well as workload. And um, as we get into the MI400 series, uh, you know, we think it's an exceptional product. So um, all in all, uh, the, the ramp is going uh, well and, you know, we will continue to earn the trust and the, the partnership of um, these large customers. Lisa has orchestrated history's most successful corporate turnaround to date while consistently under-promising and over-delivering. This is why I always take her words seriously. However, the previous words are supported this quarter by a number of notable milestones. This quarter alone, Meta deployed more than 1.5 million Epic CPUs, which is AMD's data center CPU, across their data centers to power their social media platforms. They also, quote-unquote, broadly deployed the MI3 300x to power the inferencing infrastructure at scale quote unquote so these guys are getting deep into the mi 300x which is amd's ai engine additionally lisa also stated in the call that amd is now working with meta to quote unquote expand the instinct deployments to other workloads where mi 300x offers tco advantages including training so meta is now using mi 300x for inferencing and now they seem to be moving on to training which is
is Nvidia's turf. In my last Meta update, I explained how according to Zuckerberg, Meta's upcoming Llama 4 model will require 10 times more compute than its current Llama 3.1 model, which runs on AMD's MI300 exclusively for inferencing. Indeed, as AMD continues to work closely with Meta, there's a good chance that AMD will also be powering the inferencing capabilities of the upcoming model. In the Q3 earnings call, Lisa also said that Microsoft is now using MI300 quote-unquote broadly for multiple co-pilot services which are powered by the GPT-4 family of models. And in my last Microsoft update, I discussed in depth how those co-pilots are doing. These co-pilots are driving real incremental productivity for users, making it likely that AMD will do more business with Microsoft going forward. Meta and Microsoft heavily leaning into the MI300 is a strong qualitative signal that supports Lisa's aforementioned statement. Additionally, both Microsoft and Oracle expanded the availability of MI300 instances in their respective public clouds, which is also a great signal. Going forward, AMD's annual product cadence should continue to expand and deepen the relationships with these customers. These companies are among the top computing giants on the planet, which is a great validation of AMD's technology and most importantly of the company's ability to collaborate closely with customers and build products they want, which is what enables them to over time capture market share. Meanwhile, the MI325X launched earlier this month with 20% higher inference capacity than the MI300. The MI350 is on track to launch in H2 2025 and the MI400 is on track to launch in 2026. The upward revision in AI GPU guidance from $4.5 billion to $5 billion is due to customer engagement, quote unquote, broadening according to Lisa. Per Lisa's remarks in the Q3 earnings call, it seems that AMD is seeing customers increase the range of workloads. They are running on instinct accelerators. AMD seems to have an edge in inferencing, as I predicted in my original AMD deep dive, which is what has gotten clients through the door for now. But now customers are beginning to use instinct accelerators for training workloads and other kinds of AI workloads. Here's what Lisa Sue said about this during the Q3 earnings call. So uh, uh, certainly from the $5 billion that we're talking about, um, the, the early traction has been uh, primarily with inference, just given the strength of the product portfolio. 300 is like very, very well optimized for inference, uh, given the memory uh, capacity and memory bandwidth uh, capabilities. But we have had um, some uh, you know, training adoption, and we expect that that will continue to grow as uh, we go through the next uh, few quarters. And so you know, as we, let's call it fast forward a year, I would say we would have a, um, a fairly balanced you know, portfolio between training and inference. Additionally, the operating margin of the data center segment came in at 29% in Q3, up from 19% in the same period a year ago, so Q3 2023. In this period of time, the revenue has increased 221%, which makes the increase in the operating margin even more formidable. This suggests that the segment's operating leverage is rising despite the rapid increase in volume. This is, after all, AMD's fastest growing segment ever, as do other other aspects of AMD's operation, this points to excellent management and to the fact that AMD is likely not lowballing instinct accelerator prices to drive early adoption. The increase in operating margin points to customers finding real value in AMD's accelerators. And of course, if they didn't find value in the accelerators, then Meta wouldn't be going all in in the MI300 for inferencing, which is going to be the biggest workload a few years down the line. Certainly, how one views the aforementioned advancements is a matter of duration, with a sufficiently long-term investment horizon, it would seem that AMD is executing just fine in its mission of capturing meaningful market share in the AI data center market. Meanwhile, the client segment is progressing well, with AMD expecting to have over 100 Ryzen AI Pro commercial platforms in the market in 2025. This processor represents AMD's third generation of AI-enabled mobile processors for commercial use. Their most distinctive feature is two NPUs, neural processing units, which enable the acceleration of AI workloads. Indeed, next year, Microsoft will stop technically supporting millions of Windows 10 PCs, and the aforementioned platform set up AMD very well to cash in on the resulting PC refresh cycle. Consumers will shift towards AI-based PCs with or without a recession in time, so I believe that this segment is going to do very well for AMD going forward. Client segment revenue was up 29% year-over-year, year, driven by quote-unquote strong demand 
for the latest generation Zen 5 notebook and desktop processors. To be clear, Zen 5 is a component of the Ryzen AI 300 series, providing the core CPU architecture. The Ryzen AI Pro 300 series combines this Zen 5 CPU with other technologies like the RDNA 3.5 GPU and the aforementioned XDNA 2 NPU, along with of course additional security and management features designed for business use. Now, the progress in the data center and client segments has been relatively muted by the cyclical decline of the gaming and embedded segments. Gaming revenue declined a whopping 69% year over year and embedded revenue declined 25% year over year. I've seen AMD manage many a cyclical downturn and there's nothing that makes me think that they won't be successful this time around. On the embedded side, it caught my eye that AMD's Versal AI Core Adaptive SOCs, which means system on chips, will be powering SpaceX next generation satellites. In my original AMD deep dive, I explained how AI will be everywhere and how AMD's FPGA technology uniquely sets the company up to run AI workloads in devices at the edge in a way that no one else can, in terms of the computing they get done and at what cost. In Q1 2024, and you can review this in the update that I wrote about the company back then, AMD announced its second generation Versal chip, and now it's powering the satellites of the perhaps most promising space company on Earth. I believe this is just a small taste of what AMD's adaptive technology will do as AI makes its way out from the data center and into the real world. In fact, many times on X in the past, I have shared my opinion that AMD's AI at the edge business will be as big or even bigger than Nvidia's AI training business at present. In all, my long-term AMD thesis remains intact. I see the company making great progress and the pieces are really starting to come together for AMD to become an end-to-end -end AI giant. I believe that in five years time, the company's income statement will be hard to recognize and that in normal circumstances, so unless something really bad happens in the world, which I hope doesn't, I believe that the stock will be much, much higher in five years time. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed this, can I please ask you one favor? Please share this with one friend whom you think will enjoy it. These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. If you haven't, smash that subscribe button. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about this thesis. Am I right? Am I wrong? Is this going to be a great investment long term or not? I want to hear your thoughts. And thank you very much. Take care. And until next time.